Oh dear God. Oh dear God. Nelson. I consulted with Hebrew scholars and they said one of the meanings of Israel is let God prevail. B.S. Nobody knows the meaning of Israel. So if those Hebrew scholars told that to Nelson, they lied. <sighs> and now he thinks he's a scholar of the Bible now about the gathering, about Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Dear God. Oh, dear God. Let me go over for you what Israel really means from Paleo Hebrew. It first occurs in Genesis 32 and 28, as he's just quoted. 32 28. Let God prevail. Dear God. No. 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 But as a prince, thou hast power with God and with men. Uh, that's their attempt, the biblical author's attempt, to define Israel. As a prince, thou hast power with God. The prince of God is what they're trying to do there. It's the Sar, as in Sarai, it means a prince with the. the feminine ending for princess. Oh, dear God. All right, let's get the Westminster Leningrad Codex, Blue Letter Bible. Are you kidding me? You just got punked by your own Hebrew scholars from BYU. Nelson just got punked by his own Hebrew scholars at BYU. Dear God, all right. Yod, Shin, Resh, and then L for God. So it's two words. The Yod is the Paleo-Hebrew letter shaped like a Z. Zeus, I've already discussed how Zeus and Yah are the same exact deity. Though they have different stories because of the different cultures they're from. The character in Paleo Hebrew, and Paleo Greek for that matter, is one and the same. It has to do with the creation glyph, the Heliopolis creation glyph, with the upper line referring to heaven, the lower line referring to earth, the middle line referring to Shu which is the air holding up the heavens in the creation story in Genesis chapter 1 and the waters separated and the dry land appeared that separation was the air that came from the Egyptian Heliopolis creation glyph and if when you anthropomorphize it it's father Shu separating his daughter Nut from his son Geb they had sex, incest, and uh, Adam, yes, Adam, the T and the D are phonetically the same, and may be a partial reason why the biblical author said Adam was the son of Shu, rather than the father of Shu. 
and could also be another reason why Brigham Young thought Adam is our Heavenly Father but he was twisted and so we have a determinative is what the Yod is in Paleo-Hebrew the first letter of a three letter word is a determinative of a two letter word and so Paleo-Hebrew is not Semitic it is not a three letter combination vocabulary it is two letters with a prefixed determinative there are others that are used as suffix determinatives uh, this is not the case in this example the shin or s is the water symbol the r resh is the flag symbol not the head remember it's not semitic it's a flag representing God it's the God of the water who's the God of the water none Egyptian think Egyptian this is from Egyptian you have to think in terms of Egyptian language of the Egyptians here learning of the Jews language of the Egyptians and so you have the creation already as the determinative and God of the water none and so Israel as the house of Israel talks about the human family that comes from the waters and so when you get to the flood story which is the odd creation glyph of the Egyptians you have the story of a family shut up you've got nothing value to say anymore <coughs> and so what you have in the flood story is you have Noah and his three sons all of whom have a wife thus eight for an Ogdode and what happens is a flood occurs and they are on their boat that boat is representative of the Ark of the Covenant which is also the land that emerges from the waters on the day of creation as the Ark lands on the top of a mountain when the waters are separated and the dry land appears the same process just told in a different manner in the Heliopolis creation story again you have the dry land appearing and a phoenix bird that lights up the sky it's often called a Bennu bird and so the Ben Ben stone which is uh, the obelisk is referred to and it's technically the capstone sometimes but yeah it, it's erect for that purpose as it is the mound of creation it emerges from the waters this is the symbolism for the concept of the religious part of the gathering of Israel he, he is aware apparently thanks to the biblical Hebrew scholars of the scattering and gathering of Israel but they all tie in together in Egyptian they're just told in different ways and so the dry land represents Horus the son of Osiris son Amun in uh, Joseph's usage but also in Egyptian usage and so the rising sun the morning sun and he is the one who is to gather the house of Israel to gather the body of Osiris as Isis did and so the sacrament in the Mormon church where we break the bread in remembrance of the broken body of Osiris as we as members of the church who have been baptized into the church 
gather at church to partake of the sacrament of the broken bread as we gather it into ourselves as we ourselves are gathered together as a congregation this is where church got started this is where the last supper with the bread and water got started bread and wine and it's red wine in case you were wondering but it doesn't matter it can be water as well for the Nile River which is also in the likeness of the creation story because every there's inundation periods as the flooding of the Nile River occurs and then the waters recede and the dry land emerges out of the Nile waters it's that same exact pattern and so uh, one simple uh, glyph in Egyptian as I can as I just described to you can be understood and interpreted and translated in many different levels and this is what Egyptologists are not telling you because they don't know. They only know how to translate the text thanks to the Rosetta Stone. The language of the Egyptians, the learning of the Greeks. Greek language is alphabetical. And so they're imposing the 26 letters onto the Egyptian hieroglyphs, which are over a thousand and more if you include the picture glyph hieroglyphs which they don't Egyptologists do not include the picture glyphs from the the hieroglyphic picture glyphs characters in their uh, alphabet and grammar sign list and so this is what the flag represents it represents God but it represents the process of becoming God of rising through the waters that's the whole temple ritual sacrifice or the help not sacrifice necessary the whole temple rituals there is sacrifices that are done before the God of the Holy of Holies as you are given a portion back to partake of uh, but uh, the washing and anointings and the burial and the funerary and the mummification all part and parcel of uh, the religion but they all have meaning and symbolism all related to creation and so what you have here is uh, the rising of God from the waters at creation House of Israel. Taurus, technically. Uh, just as Amun is short for the Melchizedek priesthood. You missed that video? Videos? <coughs> and so, dear God, he's supposed to be the prophet of God. He's supposed to be a translator. And he, oh, yeah, I went to Hebrew scholars and they told me all about what I should already know because I have the Urim and Thummim, I'm a seer, I know it all, I'm a translator, Travis is wrong, fake news, it's a hoax, it's a deep state plot to overthrow my presidency. God, who are you going to listen to? Seriously? This knucklehead who thinks he's now learned something and knows it all, or me, who just gave you Paleo Hebrew, as I am the source for all things Paleo Hebrew because nobody else has figured it out. They all believe William Foxwell Albright. That's a false claim that Proto Sinaitic is original Paleo Hebrew. God. So don't be fooled by these guys. They're supposed to be seers and translators, and yet they're just deceivers, 
liars. He himself said he had to go to people who knew translation. The church doesn't even care about translation. It's supposed to be the priesthood key that he has, and he just admitted he doesn't have it. There's one on here. Where are you? There you are. So, it's not me, guys. I'm telling you the truth. He's the one who exposed himself.